Greetings and welcome. I'm Dave, the AI Wizard. Today we're going to look at how the fancy new Stable Diffusion 2.0 does at generating RPG battle maps. So let's see how 2.0 does with the now, I think, classic one word prompt battle map. It's not going to be quite a one word prompt because we're going to leave our negative prompts in here from the previous video. We've got map, first person, isometric and scene just to try and weed out anything that is not an actual battle map that the AI may think we're asking for when we say battle map. The only other thing we need to change is we need to set our resolution to 768 by 768 because larger is better and we are running the 768 uh, model, not the 512 model. Okay, definitely seem to be having some problems. Maybe we need to be more specific. Maybe the classic one word prompt, sufficient for version 1.5, curiously not sufficient for version 2.0 let's put the full prompt in that we used yesterday to make a fire dungeons battle map dungeon room glowing fire dark gloomy stone overhead top down negative prompts uh same as before plus a couple of extra ones come on ai we're also going to up the batch count um so you know it gets six attempts six attempts for 2.0 to show us its metal Okay, now we are getting somewhere. This is a little better. This is actually pretty similar to some of the results we got in version 1.5. I mean, it's very zoomed in. It's really just a chunk of floor from a battle map, but it's not terrible. Okay, not great. Still kind of blurry. Right, let's add in blurry, unfocused, and hand-drawn as well as our negative prompts there. Very video gamey, the results at the moment. Um, I mean, this looks very much like a top down view of a video game to me. It's like an old fashioned video game as well, like a video game from the you know, 90s, early noughties, maybe. It doesn't look bad. It's very different from what we were getting before, though. Um, we haven't even added grainy in as a negative prompt, but we're not getting anything even vaguely grainy. I'm going to put in video game as a negative prompt because I think this is looking. It's like it thinks we're asking for a video game screenshot, a top-down video game screenshot, which we might be getting from this top-down, to be fair. Um, so, negative prompt, video game, let's try again. We're definitely making progress. This is fine, it's very plain, it's very boring, uh, but you could certainly fight a battle map in there if you wanted a plain square room with a couple of glowing orbs. Kind of, you know, cool glowing orbs. This is pretty good. Um, it's got the word battle bar up at the bottom, which is cool. It could still be a video game, but this could also very much be the output of a proper dungeon battle map maker. You could certainly use that. It's not particularly inspirational, but you could certainly use it. This is pretty good. Actually, this, this is probably the best larger multi-room dungeon that we've had yet, uh, that I've seen through 1.5 and 2.0. Uh, this is actually really good. You could upscale this and use it as a whole dungeon, you know, stick a door in there or maybe a secret door uh, leading through into this. You even got like a bit here, broken wall that you can clamber through. I really like this. I'm going to save this one uh, as a reference. You've got an exit here, an entrance here. There is a lot of consistency to this. There's a lot of coherency to this. <laughs> I had a moment there. I wasn't sure maybe 2.0 was just not going to be able to make battle maps at all. Maybe they'd taken all of the battle maps out of the training data. It doesn't seem to be the case. They may have taken some of them out. We're certainly getting a different style. Let's ask you, try asking it for an interesting dungeon room. Blowing fire. Let's add some other prompts as well, just to see if we can jazz this up a little bit. Um, we had blue flame uh, before, so let's add blue flame in here. Flare. Let's add some pressure. Uh, this is looking pretty good. We've definitely got our blue flame. We've got our regular flame. This would make a cool dungeon room encounter. We've got some nice visual effects, some flame over here, the flaming pit of death that the wall just opens up into. Um, perhaps this is just some wizard's construct in the plane of flyer with, uh, with just hell burning outside the now exposed wall here. Who knows? There's definitely a cool idea here, like a kind of blue flame in a big well in the center of the room. I could go on like this for hours uh, and I will do a whole load of stuff and I will put a little montage in at the end of just other battle maps that I've created. Uh, let's get PNG info. 
and we'll curl up one of our fire dungeons from before. There we go. We like this fire dungeon. This was good. We're going to send it first to text to image. So PNG info is great because it means you can load up any PNG you've saved previously with stable diffusion and it gives you all of the parameters that went into creating that uh, that image. So in this case, it gives us our prompts. It gives us our negative prompts. It gives us the steps we had, the sampler, uh, CFG scale, seed. Uh, image size. In theory, if we ran this in the same model, we would get the exact same result out. As this is not the same model, then we need to increase our resolution to 768 by 768. I suspect we'll get a completely different image out. Um, but let's uh, let's put the batch down, count down to one and let's just see how different it is. And it is completely different. <laughs> completely and utterly different. There's not even really much point in putting them on the screen together. Uh, they look nothing alike. One other thing we can do is we can take this and we can send it to image to image. Put our denoising strength down to 0.5. We'll go to a random seed, size back up to 768 by 768. So let's go ahead and generate. This is pretty impressive. This is a much cooler looking battle map. It's, it's less gritty and less kind of realistic or hand painted looking. Uh, and it's much more clean. But still, I mean, there's so much more detail in here. You've got these like flaming rocks. This is actually a really cool battle map, a really cool battle map. You can see there's a clear difference in style as well. There is definitely a, a, a tendency towards a differing style. I like this one. Um, this one actually is starting to get a bit, a bit more back to that sort of hand painted sort of style. There's this cool little little wall here that you could use as a bit of cover if you were to use this as an actual battle map. It's not bad. It's not bad. Uh, let's take some of the other ones that we like and try them out as well. Wow. <laughs> wow. You know what these remind me of? These remind me of like classic games like Gauntlet or, or you know, old, really old 8-bit games. Um, badly, badly, badly rendered. Clearly this is what happens if you don't set the size. Okay, so we needed to change the size from 512 to 768. We didn't do that, so these were all generated subscale and it's just confused the AI. The AI has totally lost its nut. Um, interesting. Right, let's try a proper generation. Okay, this is more like it. This is a lot more like it. And again, I mean, we've we've definitely got the style. This AI, these AIs almost have personalities, it seems. You know, I mean, this, this AI definitely is wanting to generate in this style, at least with the set of prompts that we've got at the moment. Um, and it's a cool style. If this was consistent across your battle maps in, a, in an RPG campaign, it would be fantastic. Um, and, you know, this is a great battle map. There's loads of interest. You've got big chunks of rock. You've got this cool... Look, it, it's imagined this... Well, it's almost like a 3D wall here with a, with a circle of fairly realistic flame here going into it. It's reimagined that as a circle on the floor, a stone circle on the floor with like a pit descending into fire. I think that's pretty cool. You've even got little little dots of flame around it like this, like out of outer markers. This is really cool. This is a great battle map. This is also a very different again. This almost looks like a machine now. Once again, we've got kind of fire descending into it um, or placed on top of it. This could almost be like a pipe belching flame or light out the side. It's definitely like a machine. Again, it's kind of it's kind of gone with consistency with these three uh, now sort of square boxes almost, and then we've almost got like a little three D uh, or isometric kind of building here, which looks kind of cool. Again, a great battle map. Very much, a, very much a great battle map. This is also a cool battle map. Oh, this AI, it just continues to amaze me. I could make use of all of these, any of these. I could build a whole adventure around these. Maybe that should be my next step. Um, building building an entire adventure, writing an entire adventure derived from AI battle map images um, that the AI generates. Just kind of working with the AI, seeing what the AI wants to create, and then wrapping a narrative around it. Um, let me know in the comments if that sounds like it could be interesting or something that you might want to watch. Um, Good. Okay. Well, uh, these are all fantastic. I love them all. I'm going to save them all. Let's try another one. Just we'll do another comparison because I'm really enjoying these comparisons here. One of the ones that I didn't show creating in the previous video, but I really like it. It was the keep, a ruined keep. I showed it in the sort of uh, 
little montage bit at the end of the video. Uh, send it to image to image. Um, you can maybe have a camp in there. See if it comes up with a camp of some sort. Uh, gloomy. Gritty. I know that asking for grittiness and asking to exclude graininess may be confusing, certainly for humans. Hopefully the AI understands what I'm getting at. We can also try putting the denoising strength up. So give it a little bit more latitude with what it generates. Okay. Uh, we're sort of started to get m back into the definitely the preferred style here of Stable Diffusion 2.0 battle maps. Um, almost like a kind of a painterly style, I guess you would call it. It's very cool. Um, I'm not sure if it really works that well. You've got all these different sort of materials that could be paths or they could be walls, but it doesn't really differentiate between them very well. It's a bit of a hodgepodge. It's quite a, an attractive looking map. It's cool. It's interesting. But it's probably not what I use. This one, this is much more my sort of thing. This is something that I would probably use. Uh, it looks like there is this little something here, a little tent or a little treasure chest or something. It can be turned into whatever you want, basically. I like the way it's added in this kind of um, like dirt, like used area around some of the more like traveled parts of the wall. That's really interesting. I like that one a lot. Uh, <laughs> wow. This one is awesome. Oh, I'm so glad we're back to awesome territory. So the key definitely with 2.0 seems to be to feed it an image, feed it something along the lines you're looking for and let it riff on that and come up with something awesome and cool. I, I love this one. This is awesome. You've even got like this kind of like rock. It's like added cliff cliffs in to kind of like make it look like it's built into some some actual terrain. Also very cool. 2.0 seems to be a tale of, of two sides. Um, its text to image is challenging. It definitely seems to be less understanding of what a battle map is. It seems to want to give you much more results that are either video gamey or that are very kind of zoomed out, almost like a plan rather than a battle map. But the flip side of that is image to image is really good. It's really, really good still. In fact, if I had to create a battle map today for today or for tomorrow if i didn't want to mess around too much i didn't want to do a lot of experimenting i would probably do it in 1.5 and what i might do once i created something i liked in 1.5 is bring it over into 2.0 run it through an image to image here and see if it could make a, uh, a, a an improvement to it and i think it would i think it would make an improvement to it for one thing it would be bigger um, so this is obviously a 768 by 768, um, whereas the input was 512 by 512. So already we've got a little bit of extra native resolution before we upscale it. And um, I think that would be really good. And this sort of plays into the next step in this journey of battle map creation using AI and collaborating with AI. There's a bunch of stuff that I haven't done yet. And I think for the sake of video length, I'm not going to do it right now, um, but there's more stuff we can do with image to image. We can use in-painting, which we've not done at all yet. With uh, in-painting, we can basically draw masks over things and we can say, just regenerate this, just regenerate this area here. So I don't know if this is even going to work in um, in this, this version, uh, but we can sort of put our denoising strength right up and we can change our thing to, I don't know, let's uh, let's say a throne. Let's, let's, I want a throne in the corner of this room. I don't know if this is going to work. I said I wasn't going to do it in this video for the sake of video length. This is just a, this is a preview, a preview of a, of, of a video to come if people want to see it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, n not a throne, um, a giant golden pillar with uh, cloth draped over it um, in totally the wrong kind of orientation for the battle map, but cool I guess uh clearly clearly in painting <laughs> it's just a window it's just a curtain with a window opening up into nothing um okay this isn't entirely surprising so we, we haven't loaded a special in painting model which is part of the problem I didn't change the prompt to anything other than a one word prompt throne which is a problem the negative prompts equally a problem this is not about in painting this is a preview of what in painting can do in a future video, I'll show you how to use in painting properly. I hope you enjoy that. Until next time, thanks a lot for watching. I have been Dave, the AI wizard, and I'll see you later.